Hello, everyone, and welcome to the MDL Podcast Storytime Epic Fun Adventure. I'm your host, Daniel, and this is today's guest, Matthew. Whoop. I'm just kidding, he's not actually a guest. We're both regulars here on the MDL channel, as you might be able to tell by now. But at the end of this video, we have a special treat for you, so either watch the whole thing or skip to the end right now. So yeah, Wait. here we go. This is called Baby in the Bush. Yes. All right. So, do you want to just jump right into this, M Dog? Let's, let's jump right into it, D Dog. So, California, not gonna upload the vlogs, too lazy, didn't record right, any hoop. We were in Hayward, California, walking along this mountain, okay? Now, you go up this mountain, and below you see a camp the campus for Cal State. There's a little bit of some dorms to the left, you know, a little bit of, little bit of a storage, some storage lockers, at, you know, to the right of the uh, campus with the parking lot in between. And then on the other side of the mountain, once you cross the threshold, then you see the entire Bay Area, well, not the entire Bay, but most of the Bay Area, San Francisco on the right, almost San Jose on the left. It's pretty neat. That's why we were up there. So we're walking up higher on the mountain in that direction because we wanted to be able to see San Jose. Right, Matthew? Yep. And as we're walking up here, we're right kind of above the storage lockers. And from down where the storage lockers are, we hear a baby crying. Is that right, we Matthew? The pap. We heard the baby crying. So it was a legit baby, like, gimme bottle scream. It was like, you know, a baby crying out from the bushes. So there's the storage lockers. Then by the storage lockers, this little, like, paved out, not paved, but flattened area, but just, like, some dumpsters little dirt equivalent of a parking lot, fenced in, and that's where we heard the baby from, the shady little lot. And what else do we see there, Matthew, since you haven't done much talking yet? Two police. <laughs> so there are two police. <laughs> I'll go with that. Down by the storage lockers behind it, using their large flashlights to look around, like they're looking for, I don't know, a baby crying. And yes. the cops, they then skirt out of there. They get back into their cars, and they pull out... Two cars gone right past where the baby was crying. And me and Matthew were like, Bruh. hashtag WTH. What the heck? Right, stop, what is going stop. on? What? No hashtags. <laughs> and, anywho, we decided that after a little bit of skeptical thinking and scaredness, we decided to kind of go down there and see what was going on. So to go down there, we had to walk back to where we came up because... It was pretty much embedded with thorns all the way down, if we went right straight down from there. So we go down the path, down to the parking lot, and then we cut across a little bit of field, and we go to the lot area. Now, yeah. we're pretty scared. We just kind of listen around, and we're, you know, we, on the way down, we heard another little human child scream. So we're pretty, we're, we're certain this is a baby at this point. So we're it's like, baby. yes, it's this baby. We we're, we decided that we have to go get help. So we see a cop that pulled out of the parking lot, kind of sitting in the dorm parking lot, probably uh, just you know waiting for someone to skirt by, and get them for speeding. So we start to run down toward that cop to share with him what we hear. And one, so it's probably about two thousand three hundred and forty-four feet from where he was to the to, from where we were, and. We start the run down there, and by the time we get to about, I don't know, 1,453 feet away from him, he pulls out and goes to the main road, and he's gone. Never to be seen again. And we're like, Bruh. Dang it. So, we then decided to go down to the road where we saw him pull out on, because... Pull out on. When we were coming up to that location, we passed the road, and we saw a little nook where our cop was nestled. And we thought that maybe he went back to that nestling area to scout. So we head to the road, and then we look where the uh, the cop was. He's not there. And we're, you know, again, we're like, dang Bruh. it. So after our second dang it, we head back up to where we were before. Not where we originally heard it, but where we heard the baby coming from. So we walk there. We go in there. We listen. We hear a few st uh, sticks breaking. Could have been a bird, could have been a mouse, could have been a baby, who knows. But uh, we decided that right then that we're going to take action here 
and right by the uh, lot, there was a little call box, so if you get like mugged in the back of the parking lot, you go to the call box and you report it. So we open the thing up, Matthew takes the phone, and he presses the call button, and he gets through to a 911 operator. And I'm gonna let him explain the dialogue from then on out, if he doesn't mind. So, uh, I said hello to the cop. He was a very nice man. No, he wasn't. Uh, he... he was very unhelpful. We had to... Shut. We had to explain everything to him in overbearing detail that we shouldn't have. Oh, yeah. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, he was like, what's the emergency? And I was blah, 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 baby screaming, bush, not far away. He was like, where are you? And we had to explain, like, what parking lot we're in probably ten times. He, like, he did not have... A brain. He's pretty incoherent, probably because he wasn't taking the kids seriously because we told him we were 13. So I had to run down to the dorms and see what, you know, one was called Juniper and one was called Penis. I had to see what they were called. And I also went and saw the office, Office 102, Cal State Office 102. So I ran back up and told Matthew, but somehow he had figured out where we were without that information. I don't know why he could have just done that in the first place. And uh, he said that the cops were on their way. So Matthew gave him his phone number, 440-372-4916. Yep. And we run back down to the road, and we basically wait for the cops. And on the way to the road, we get a call from the police asking where we are. So we said, you know, we're going to be by the road soon. And then once we're at the road, we uh, see the cops pulling up. So we were just waiting there for about five, seven minutes. You're getting pretty, you know, why are they not here? Then they come, they come speeding up like 70 miles an hour in a 35 zone. You know, they are flying in. They weren't going 70, they are going like 50. Fine. But still, like, they pulled up, they jumped out, we explained, and they ran to, you know, they went to the, they said they were already there, so it was the same cops. I don't know, we, they, didn't, they didn't say what they were doing there. But... They wanted to do an eco lab. Oh, to yes, line I was up. about to say that. So they, we heard them, we heard the, uh, obviously, the, the, uh, the good police officer, the, one in charge of the other two because there was two cars. The cop, had one. not the dispatcher. Yeah, he uh, said to the other two cops, "Let's run an eagle lab." Now, if you know what an eagle lab is, please tell us in the comments. We couldn't find it online. We don't know yet. But basically, uh, they said, "Okay, go back to your house. It's late. We'll figure this out." So we wait. We went. There was a little staircase nearby. We waited there for a little bit. They didn't come out, so they were there for a while, probably searching. And then we decided to go home. I passed out in the chair, and as he passed out on the couch, we lived happily ever after. We don't know if the baby was found. A few suspicions of ours, one of them is that someone dumped their baby, you know, a college girl got pregnant, didn't want it, threw it over a fence and ran. But the more likely uh, one is that a homeless mom was in those bushes with the baby, and then she heard us, she heard us call the cops, and when we went to the road, she, you know, ran off back away. We saw someone running up on a mountain, you know, Matthew saw... Uh, you saw someone running up on the hill opposite mm -hmm. the parking lot, right? Yeah, it might have been a Wendigo, but who knows? <laughs> Doesn't live in Ohio. Anywho, right. yeah, we saw her. Uh, we were like, whack. Didn't pay much attention because that was before everything really unfolded. We were still a little bit scared. But anywho, not before everything unfolded, sorry. Just like, in the middle of everything. But anyway, that was our story time. And here is a song that I have written about this whole experience. Uh, make sure to uh, give us money via Kickstarter. We'll see you in the next roleplay video. Bye, Bye. Felicia. <laughs>
We then got through to the cops and explained the entire plot. They told us to describe our exact location, but we didn't know our location in the nation. So I ran about a mile or a few and found a little office that said 102. So I sprinted back on over to Matthew and said, tell him to come on over to Cal State Office 102. He said, it's okay, bro. They know where we are, and they're coming out now. They aren't very far. So we headed back to a large boulevard and waited and waited to see a cop car. We finally saw those red and blue flashes, and we flagged them down, and they scurried in to ask us if we had any information that might help them out. We told them the time, the location, and the situation. They thanked us for our help, and then they headed out. We'll never really know what happened there, because we were sent back to our house where I passed it on a chair. We woke up the next day a little bit shook, but we shared a story, and it was all that went down. It ended like a fairy tale book. Happily ever after. Uh!